Okay. So, All right. Here we go. The room is now locked, and we're we're live. And welcome, everyone, um, in from Passion to Profit. And I'm Laurel Elian. I'm creator of From Passion to Profit. I am a psychosomatic therapist, and my business is Mind Your Business because. Everything that's going on here is going on <laughs> out there. I am all about the body-mind connection. And when you understand how, how you've come to be in the shape you're in, you'll start understanding your life. And I have, some, I have a beautiful girlfriend with me today who's a brilliant mind. And um, we've known each other for a few years. And Rachel Stone is coming in from one of my favorite places that I've been able to hang out in the world with her in Florida. Yeah. Uh, Ra Rachel is a published author of Love Affair 101 and Five Keys to Taking Charge of Your Life and feeling loved again after divorce. Rachel's a speaker, a coach, a mom, a lover of life. She's also a master's level therapist with decades of experience in um, mental health field. And after going through her own divorce with two young children, she's she now coaches other women how to claim their power, how to identify their chosen paths and step into their new lives with strength and purpose. And uh, with combined personal and professional experience, Rachel helps women grow through their grief, loss and adversity. And what I often say is the greater the adversity, the greater the gift on the other side. So true. Rachel, how do you so true. get through it? So, <laughs> so uh, welcome to from Passion to Profit. You're a member here, and um, people can tap into you through through the group here and through your practice. And you know, one of my questions to you is, you know, why why are you on this path? You could choose so many paths. <laughs> you're doing what you're, you're doing. doing. <laughs> <laughs> right. tell, tell me why you're so passionate about it in the sense that you know what why uh why do you see that you know there's there's something that that you can share with people that you know they don't have to suffer it's you know? so true and and there's an antidote to that all that fear and suffering and frustration like i it's well let me back up and say thank you so much for having me. I'm really glad to be here. I just adore you, Laurel. <laughs> always have, always will. <laughs> and um, and I just, I really, um, I'm really grateful to be on on the path that I'm on um, because I get to see the results of people going from just um, broken and you know like their lives feel like a wrecking ball um, in all areas of their lives and they just they're spinning with fear and spinning with with anxiety and stress and depression and um, you know I had been a therapist I've been a therapist for really um, about three decades I hate to, to date myself here but I'm 50 and fabulous <laughs> And um, that said, um, <laughs> took me a bit to get there <laughs> to feel like that. We're a lot of work, aren't we? We're a lot of work. We're, we're worth it. Work. <laughs> but um, but when you do get there and you're really able to um, identify and and really stand in your truth of of who you are and and what you're about and then share it with the world, you're so lucky because it just builds and builds and builds and builds and it's so doable, it really is. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't, I was a therapist um, for a while before I got divorced, but because of my, and I, and I was a good therapist, but I am so much better now as a therapist and a coach because of my own life experience. And it's funny because I, I wrote my book in 2016 and I didn't really, I wrote it 
really as a as kind of a, a cathartic therapeutic thing for myself. And it mm-hmm. wasn't until I'd say maybe like a couple years later that I was really strongly encouraged. Like you could really help a lot of people, a lot more people than you already are. If, if you like get this out and start coaching and, and so that's when I really started to do that. But it really, I, I've had a, a lot of really great experiences. Um, I've worked for hospice for about seven years and that was a really amazing life experience, both personally and professionally right. because it really taught me a lot about loss and how wow. people right. cope. And, Mm -hmm. and really because of my own, my own loss experience was the death of my marriage. And it took me a long time to divorce my divorce. (laughs) Right in it. I was holding on to it for like dear life for a long time. Can I just say in there what, what you just said, and it's really key, the death of my divorce. Here's so I'm on my lucky number three <laughs> and next year is 25 years. Oh, congratulations. I was a single mom with, you know, uh, eight months old and one a year older. And so uh, truly if I'd have stayed, it was, that wasn't easy leaving as right. Cause all, all that you're, you go through, like you have everybody else's opinions uh-huh. and, I, my, mine was the guy, everybody loved it. It was like, well, you don't live with him. (laughs) So there had to be a death of my old life in order to live what I live today. And, and when even, um, I, as, as a psychosomatic therapist, when people say my ex, I say, call them by their name because always, uh, otherwise you're always anchoring that ex into your life call him by his name or her name so yeah. you can release them. Yeah. 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 That's, that's so, really great. Yeah. That's really great. Um, my kids were seven and four when I got divorced. I owned my own business. It was a brick and mortar. I owned a, um, a wellness spa at the time. And, um, and I won while I was getting divorced. I literally went from um, <laughs> divorce, eight hours of divorce court fighting for child support and whatnot. To, and I, I went straight from there to this big chamber of commerce event where I didn't realize that I won, I won the outstanding business of the year award. I didn't write a speech because I was certain that I would certainly not be chosen. As one of so I like, you know, skirted into there. The president of the chamber of commerce said, you know, oh, thank God you're here. And I was like, that's a weird, you know, like, <laughs> that's a weird hello. I sat down because I was late. You know, I went straight from divorce court and um, it's insane. And <laughs> I sat down, <laughs> ordered a drink, and then they called my name. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> So Love it. We had to go out there and just wing the speech to 300, this giant conference center, 300 business people. And I wound up just going up and being very, very grateful. Um, we did have the world's only anti-aging showers in this wellness spa. And that was the last thing that they said when they introduced me. So I started with a joke and said, hi, I'm Rachel Stone, and um, I'm actually 80 years old. I just shower at Aquastone. And the whole place, like, erupted. And, you know, I was like, oh, phew. You know, like, <laughs> glad that landed. And then I just thanked everyone and thanked everyone and thanked everyone. The craziest part about that, though, and this is my point to all of that, is that I looked on the outside like I had it all together. What was happening on the inside for me, you know, I I put a really happy smiley face on me. Mm-hmm. Um, I literally was emotionally and spiritually and physically and financially broken. I wound up closing a year later because I had I and I, I had to declare bankruptcy. My business went under. Um, I was afraid I was going to lose my house. I like I was really in like the depths of hell and my pride was shattered um, because I just won this like beautiful award. Right. And, and, and again, looked on the outside, like I had it all together, but was what was really happening behind closed doors is I was falling apart. And that is what 
has brought me to where I am here now is I know that I understand that women are putting on the happy face and like just trying to like push through and we make the mistake of trying to do it alone. I made that mistake. You, you, you feel so misunderstood. Your pride is so broken. You're, you feel so broken. You don't think that there are solutions out there and there really are. There really are. Yeah. And um, and I know that I had promised you before that I said, oh, I'll do some teaching. <laughs> there, well, yeah, yeah. There, I just, there, it's crazy because um, there's something that I kind of coined, and, and it's funny because I, I have to really give a lot of credit to my mom, who is a licensed clinical social worker. <clears throat> She's retired, but we bounce stuff off of each other all the time. She also worked at hospice, which is really interesting. And um, something that we both realized that is common in um, all people going through any kind of loss is that there are three major components and this is something that i coined as like the three c's you have to get your three c's in check in order to be able to move forward and start creating a life and building momentum to rebuild your life and put you put the pieces back together and those three c's stand for comfort connection and control and just to simplify it you know and i i have like a i have a journal i forgot to tell you about <laughs> i have like a journal that people can download if they wanted but it's um and it, it gives prompts on how you can identify but do three things for comfort is is doing things that comfort you and it doesn't need to be a trip to tahiti it can literally be things like i love i love my my tea and you know my special tea and my special <laughs> mug or like I, I love uh, my wearing my fuzzy slippers or petting my dog or my no. cat. Where does Any the feel of ice cream go in there? <laughs> that's in comfort. That's in comfort. I had a woman, I had a client. <laughs> she said, I love taking my bra off as soon as I get home from work. I'm like, oh, me it's too. <laughs> the, the pantyhose. For me, it's that's the pantyhose. <laughs> That's comfort, right? So it can be anything ranging from mani patties to, you know, hot bubble baths. It doesn't need to be extravagant. It's whatever gives you comfort. And you just fill up the page with writing down all of the things that, that comfort you. It could be talking to your kids. It could be snuggling your cat or your dog or your parakeet. Like it doesn't need to be anything major, but identifying what those things are that comfort you. And then connection is the second C. And um, the connection are knowing who your people are that support you. And you can really go broad with this because it could literally be people like your accountant, your car repair guy, like those people support you and things that you need, right? So those are part of your support system. And, but really also you wanna identify the people that you would reach out to the most call them, thank them for being your people and ask them if it's okay. If you're having a hard day, can you text them and they can give you some encouragement or can you reach out to them and they tell you how awesome that you are and remind you of how awesome you are. And then the last but not least is, is um, control and control. <laughs> control gets a little tricky because I, I'll tell people like, think of some things that um, nobody could ever take away from you. What are some things that you possess that nobody could ever take away from you? And of course, initially people go to like the tangible things like my car, my house, my job, my kids, you know, whatever. And I'm like, that's all great. That's, you know, like, okay, good. I'm glad you have those things. How about things like that are intangible, like your sense of humor, your perseverance, your, sen your, your creativity? Like, what is it that makes you special that nobody could ever take away from you? And once you start filling up those three categories, like fill up the page, there's two things that happen. One is you actually get to notice what you might need to work on. If your connection piece only has like two people on it or no people, that's, that's, a, that's a part of your life that you need to work on. You need to get some people in your corner so that you feel supported because these three C's are foundational to your healing. They're foundational to daily functioning. Like you have to comfort yourself. You're reminding yourself that you matter. You have to have people in your corner. Women naturally produce a stress reducing hormone called oxytocin just by being with each other. We're doing it right now, Laurel. 
<laughs> we're creating oxytocin. It's a drug. It is a drug. It's, it's a, a good love drug. drug. It's called the love drug. That's right. And <clears throat> women think that they, that's why there's that whole misnomer. Women think that they're supposed to be doing everything on their own. They have to have like the weight of the world on their shoulders and just like tough it out on their own, figure it out. So wrong. We are literally genetically made up to support one another. And like, you're getting the oxytocin just as much as I am. It's mm -hmm. like oxytocin all around. Like we all mm -hmm. get it. And it's a natural stress reducer. So why would you not want to have that? Right? Well, right. In, uh, in our mammalian brain has, you know, way back, the women were the, the, the gatherers, you know, they went out yeah. and picked the berries and then they ex went to the other <laughs> villages and they exchanged with other women. And we're, we're still like that. And yeah, when I hear you, you talk, yeah, what I hear you talking about are, are the rituals yes. to make our life, our own personal life sacred. Yes. So we, we, in order to have that sense of, uh, you're talking about personal power, absolutely. It is. It is. Yeah. When, you, when you have, when you create for yourself a safe space, whether it be in your home, out, you know, out in your backyard, under a tree, like it doesn't matter where it is, but if you create like a safe space and you purposely do things that comfort you on purpose, like from your list, pick three things and do them on purpose every day. You're counteracting the stress. And, and when your stress goes down, your clarity goes up. When your stress goes down, you're um, able to problem solve much easier. It goes up. When your stress goes down, your self-trust goes up. Mm -hmm. And that self-trust, like we will make promises to ourselves all the time. And we always think so big you know, when, we, when we're trying to build those, that self-trust and that, those confidence muscles, it doesn't come from, it doesn't just like drop out of the air or onto our heads and we're like, I'm suddenly confident. You have to build your self-trust. And by doing things that comfort you on the daily, on purpose, you're reminding yourself that you matter. You're lowering your stress. You're taking time out for yourself. <clears throat> and, and you want to do things that are small so that you can accomplish them mm -hmm. on purpose and then that builds your trust it's the bridge that's the bridge there's a big gap if you're telling yourself like i'm gonna lose 20 pounds in a month <laughs> like, and nine times out of ten most people are not going to be able to do that unless they've done it before they already have that self-trust right but mm -hmm. if if that's like a a crazy goal you know like a, the New Year's resolutions that people make. You have to start small. Start with, I'm going to drink eight glasses of water every day. Start there because that's something yep. that you'll accomplish. And you can like, and you start building and building and building. That's where you gain momentum is you put the comfort in place, the self trust, and your confidence builds and builds and builds. When you have the connections in place, that it builds even more, it, that builds up momentum. And the control is, the reason that that's tricky is because when our lives feel really out of control, it's, the reason is because we're trying to control things that we have no business. We can't control other people. When you get divorced from your ex-husband, you can't tell him how to parent anymore. You can try. <laughs> you can try, but he doesn't have to listen to you. <laughs> He's going to parent how he's going to parent, you know, like, mm -hmm. and you really don't have a say in it. And that is a really hard thing for a mom to accept. You mm -hmm. think things should be done a certain way. They should go to bed at a certain time. They need their snuggly. You want a phone call, you know, like all of these things that you're used to having control over that you no longer have control over. So the key is to focus on the things that you do. You have to know the difference between what you don't have control over and what you do and focus on the things that you do. Because as you know, Laurel, what you mm -hmm. focus on is what will grow, right? Yeah. Well, I, I truly, uh, ev everything that you're saying is so true, right? And the, the thing of it is, is that when we're in it, there's a storm around us and, yeah. and we can't control that. And right. what I learned from my own experience was that there was such a big storm, so much was out of my hands. So I yeah. came to a place of, with 
my, my little girl said to me, like they never saw anything. They never saw arguing. That wasn't, that wasn't the situation I left. There was other stuff. But my little girl, she was four years old. She says, mommy, maybe if you were nicer to daddy, he'd come home. They were still, that was three years later, she's still waiting for daddy to come home because in the absence of, you know, of uh, an explanation, I didn't tell them. So then I decided I will tell them. And what I did say to them was, mommy and daddy are living our lives and we're doing the best that we know how to do. Daddy will have his story. Mommy has her story. And inside there, you're going to grow up and you, you're going to have your story. So that's kind of how I left it. And he was absent for the rest of their life. Uh, oh, okay. Physically absent. Okay. So then years later, 20 years later, there's, um, you know, a funeral and the girls go oh. to, I take the girls to the funeral. It was his mom. And they hadn't seen us in 20 years. We were able to walk in. Nobody knew who we were. <laughs> I oh, was like, God. yes. And, no. and I, we were the last ones to go in and we sat in our vehicle and I said, okay, so you can decide, like, you don't have to stay. We'll go in. We can leave anytime. I, yeah. I was the one that was in the worst mental state because yeah. how are they going to act towards me? Anyways, right. um, that was the beginning of their, their, forming a relationship they always had the option to go they chose not to and he chose not to so now today girls are 30 and 31 and now um, this last Christmas my 31 year old she says mom thank you so much for all the work you've done on you because oh. I recognize that she was reading women who run with wolves <laughs> she says if you hadn't done the work on you I wouldn't be reading that book and seeing yeah. Yeah, so um, they see the life that he has today that that would be his children today would be them. Yeah, so I didn't, I couldn't have envisioned. I yeah. had to go on my own healing journey to yeah. to be that, and um, it was very painful, very uncomfortable. No child support, yeah. no family support. Yeah. That today ha was my greatest. That was my grit, my gift to me in that I had to muster it up because what yeah. I wouldn't do for me, I would do for my children. Yes. And, yeah. you know, that's um, that, that strength of, uh, that women have, um, we, we can draw on that. And you're, Absolutely. you're right. I love that you said draw on each other, have those relationships because I was you business. Yeah. Um, I had my own business. I was an educator. I traveled. I wore all of these hats yeah. and I, I can do it myself. Yeah, <laughs> I did, but it yeah. was not on yeah. the inside. That's you know, so those patterns stay with you and they, they usually do. cause um, illness, disease, yeah. more dysfunction. They do. They yeah. do. Absolutely. That, mm -hmm. it, absolutely. And, um, and you kind of touched on something that it really triggered a memory because I remember telling my ex-husband that um, I'm going to work really hard at forgiving you because um, I want our children to grow up in a loving environment and not a hateful one. And we are the biggest example of that for them right now. Right. And it's, and it really is true. Like, mm. and uh, like I, I too worked very hard on kind of shielding my kids from yeah. any angst, you know, like, I mean, <laughs> we become hard, right? Yeah. We become hard. We come hard, hard in our bodies as, uh, as, as a therapist too. And that was my, my healing journey. And I see that in women today, how they become hard. I had yeah. become hard. It yeah. shows in your face. It shows in your body. It shows in, in, even if you're the most compassionate person, if you're not kind and loving to yourself, if you've not forgiven yourself, others feel that hardness in you. For and sure. absolutely. That's absolutely. how you get the opposite of what it is that you wish. The, yeah. And the other thing that you said, it, like I loved how you, like the ability to be able to reframe. And of course, you know, um, 
Life is backwards. <laughs> it is. Like, it's, it's hard to do that when you're in the midst of it. It's really hard to say, like, my divorce is an opportunity. <laughs> you know, like, when you're, when you're in it, you're like, um, yeah, screw you. You know, you don't really feel like that at all. You know? Uh, <laughs> well, I, right. And I, I was at a place, my, um, truly, I knew I was giving my children a better life by moving on. Me so too. that was my driver. My um, but yes, yeah, when you're in it, that's not how it feels. <laughs> and, and that's why I always go back to the three C's. Because when you're in it, you have to adopt those foundational pieces so that you can remind yourself and offset the stress. So you're like reminding yourself, like, I can get through this, I matter, and I have, you know, like you, you basically are resourcing yourself so that you have like, like backup, you know, like, okay, yeah. I know that on this day, I'm gonna meditate for 10 minutes, I'm gonna drink my apple cider vinegar, you know, <laughs> Action, <laughs> and I'm gonna drink eight glasses of water because those things comfort me, or whatever it is that comforts you. Yeah. I'm gonna wear my fuzzy slippers at night because that makes yeah. me feel, you know, like those three things, three things. And then if I still feel bad, I got my backup. I can reach out to these people who are gonna tell me I got this, who believe in me, who are gonna be supportive of me and reduce my stress, you know, like and. And then I'm going to focus on the things that I can control because I can't control all this over here. Like, this is so messy. Look over here. You remind me of so many things as we're talking. I didn't, I didn't plan this. This is not a topic that I talk about anymore. It consumed me for so long. So Rachel, what, what you said um, about, you know, hospice and that, one of oh, my uh, spiritual teachings that, that I learned and I heard, if you're not getting enough, you're not giving enough. And sure. so volunteerism was yeah. one of the ways that I did therapy for me. And yeah. then I taught that to the girls. And as a family, we yeah. would do that. And I just, um, it reminded me also of how um, Later on, my girls were 12 and 13, and he took me back to court for all the back um, child support. Like, there was, I had never received any uh, willingly. There was a time when the court stepped in and they were garnishing his wages. And, anyways, it was a small amount compared to what they had. Left. I left. We I sold. We sold our house and we paid off all debt. And that's when I told him I was leaving because I wanted a clear break. And yeah. so, anyways, through that situation, he won. They decreased the amount that, and it was really odd. My lawyer actually was quite uncomfortable with uh, standing up to the judge. In oh that. my goodness! It was, it was so weird what happened. And um, I walked away from that. It's like, wow, it's all of that that I looked at it as well. All of that money that I didn't have to raise those girls. And I had to turn it into, look at what I've done. Look at, look at the product that I've. So I wrote my first letter to, of forgiveness to him. And it is what I do with my clients today, whatever the issue is. But to write, I wrote a letter and I thanked him for being such a great teacher because I wouldn't have stood up for myself that way, but I did it because I stood up for my kids. Yeah. And uh, within three months, I got my first voluntary uh, child support payment from him. It was a letter that I didn't mail. I wrote, I wrote in it all of the stuff that I've been carrying in my body. And there were a lot of tears. It took me, I, I didn't write it in one day. <laughs> <laughs> it took many tries. <laughs> there was a lot of four letter words in there. <laughs> and, and at the end of it, it was important for me to say, I thank you. I release you. You're free to be you and I am free to be me. And yeah. that was, that's one of the, the rituals that we still do today at, okay. on our holidays. Uh, is that we uh, we do it now on Chinese flash paper. Everybody oh. writes what they're letting go of and what they want to bring in. And then as a family, and we do this with relatives too, and then we burn it. 
and it's important to burn it. And if you yeah. can't burn it, we do paper shredder ceremony. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. Was, it. It's very, really powerful for. It is powerful. It's all about releasing. And uh, I learned that there's uh, many writers do this process too, because it, it's left, right brain when you write it with your hand. So what you visualize and um, that analytical part of you, and then when you write it, the act of physically writing it manifests. Mm -hmm. so anyways, mm -hmm. that, yeah. That, uh, so you reminded me of that. <laughs> I, like, I love it, I love it. Love it. Look, look at our lives today because we've had that. And uh, I, my husband today is the kind of person that, when things don't work out, he says, well, must be a new opportunity happening. So wow. that, that more so too. So, yeah. Yeah. so, um, yeah. your there's, you had four C's. There was four, four C's <laughs> well, three, you, three main C's. It's comfort. Community, yeah. Comfort, yeah. connection, and control are the three yeah. main C's. Yeah. Um, and that, and if you put those in place, then it lowers your stress, increases your, your confidence and your ability to problem solve. Um, there's another way too, to, to um, I talked a little bit about creating like a safe space. So it's sort of like your, if you think of yourself as a cell phone, it's like your recharging dock. <laughs> it's your safe yeah. space and having like a physical safe space with it's like your sort of, um, it's like your your own private like escape room, you know, your own little oasis. And um, I had done that. It's really interesting because I had a moment. Oh, it was such a profound moment for me. Um, and I'm so glad that I already have told you about like owning my my spa, the wellness spa. And, and I won that award. And part of the reason I believe that I won the award was um, was because when I was so dedicated to making the spot like as soon as you walked in it was this like oasis and we tickled every single sense that you had we had a signature scent and we had you know signature music and you know like the whole place was like i mean for for your eye like everything was beautiful you know and then you were you were served cucumber mint water and you know like it just it was an experience and I had this really profound moment one night. I, I had a really hard time sleeping in my own bed after I got divorced, partly because I had not, like I stayed in the, in the same house where we had been married and had children and, you know, this house that we created together. And I never revamped it, you know, like not even our room. And so I would sleep on the couch, especially when the kids were at their dad's house. And so um, on this particular weekend, it was like three or four in the morning. I'm having a really major, big boohoo fest. And all of a sudden, I was like laying on the couch. And all of a sudden, <laughs> this makes me sound like such a crazy person, but I, I'm going to share it anyway. Crazier the better. I love all you. This, I know, right? Us <laughs> women are crazy. Um, I, all of a sudden, I felt like I was laying on someone's lap and someone was stroking my hair and saying, it's okay, it's okay. And I sat up with a jolt and thought to myself, great, not only is my life falling apart, I'm going crazy too. You know, like I just really just was like, oh no. And I marched into my, I felt so compelled to march into my room and I had like a full blown temper tantrum, pulling things off of the sheets and the blankets and the pillowcases and everything off of the bed just feverishly and got like wrapped up in it and fell down and was like so angry. And I was like this hot, sweaty mess, grabbed everything, threw it in the garage next to the um, wash and dryer, marched in my son's room and got his little itty bitty seven year old blanket and his little itty bitty seven year old pillow, picked it up, took it and slept on that bare mattress. And when I woke up in the morning, I realized that I needed to create what I had created for so many other people in that spa. I needed to make it my own yeah. safe place, my own oasis. And to this day, it still is. It's like my, even my kids, they're teenagers now. It's like their favorite room. Their mm -hmm. friends come in there. Like everybody, yeah. that's the congregation yeah. room where everybody shares really juicy things that are happening in their lives. And, um, and it's just still to, day like that's like my safe 
space. That's where I comfort I'm, myself. Yeah. I'm just going to say hi to everyone out there who's watching, who's joining us. And maybe this speaks to you. Uh, do type in any questions you have for Rachel. She's a brilliant mind, a therapist of 30 years, and she specializes in helping women uh, find their power, claim their, reclaim their power after divorce. And uh, Rachel, what you're saying, I, I spend a lot of time in the unseen world working. <laughs> That's maybe something you didn't know about me. But um, I, I, come, I come from alternative therapies too. I'm a psychosomatic therapist, but also this other world, uh, the unseen stuff. And from, um, from those studies, uh, it's that mattress holds the energy of the two of you. And yeah. when you move, you're supposed to get a new, new mattress. Yeah. Uh, but it, it only makes sense that you clear the energy um, afterwards. And I believe that you were probably calling, calling in someone that watches over you. And that might have been enough to, to blow up your pity party. <laughs> To, to put you into action <laughs> because yeah you know blow get it out blow out yes. the old energy and yes. that's why i say the the fire ceremony you know write that letter burn it to ash so yes. you know, so that it's gone it's dissipated yes. and yes. being conscious of that and yeah creating creating that that sacred space inside yourself is yeah we so overlook it because we're so used to out there, everything out there and what it looks like. And you talked yeah. about your mask. That's what we do. Fake it till we make it. And <laughs> I, I don't even say that anymore for myself. Uh, it's Now it's kind of like faith it till you make it. But it's yeah. like, let's just be real. Let's just be honest. Because yeah. it, everybody else really is too busy. They really don't care what's going on with us. You know, that's kind of the reality of it. Because if right. you don't support you, Others, well, you know, our friends and family will be there for a certain amount of time, but then it's like, come on. Yeah, everybody gets on with their lives. So true. So, so true. <laughs> so to everyone watching, I'm so, so glad that you're joining us. And uh, Rachel's coming in from Florida. I'm in Saskatchewan. And it's, um, well, we, we had snow still yesterday. No. It's kind of crazy. That's, no snow uh, here. No snow I here. typically would be in Florida right around this time of the year. So that's our world will change and the borders will open. And I've posted in the chat box, uh, the, the link to, um, to sign up for a complimentary session with Rachel and, and Rachel, I'm just going to let you chat about that. And, oh, uh, sure. yeah. Sure. So, um, yeah, I was telling Laurel that I, um, I have three decades of experience as a therapist. And so this would not be like a, your typical, you know, sell you something strategy call kind of thing. You know, like a, I really feel very, um, I'm very generous with, um, sharing how we can figure out what your next best moves are on the very first session. And, um, and so I call it a clarity call. And, um, and basically we look at what's going on in your life right now and how we can help you move forward with your next best move and, um, and just gain some clarity so that you're not struggling so much. You know, like, the, like I said before, honestly, you can take what you've learned even just today and implement like those three C's. It does take some practice and um, I'm a firm believer in hiring people and, you know, coaching. I couldn't be a coach if I didn't believe in it. <laughs> like, so um, we all have coaches. We are I <laughs> am a firm believer. And, and yeah. like, since I, like years and years ago, after I hired my first coach and saw the results, I, I have always had somebody in my corner to help. And that's how, that's how we met was through our, our yeah. coach at the time. Yeah. So, um, just, just for clarity, yes. those watching, um, Rachel is offering the clarity session at, uh, no, no fee. So get, get on a call yeah. with her and discover I just opened those up. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just opened up some, some um, <laughs> spaces. I usually will charge like $250 for one session with me, but, um, but this is, I, I really want to like, I, I know that there's a lot of suffering in the world and there doesn't need to be, there really doesn't need to be. And sometimes people just need like a, a small tweak, you know, and some people need some, some bigger tweaks and um, yeah. <laughs> I'm here for all of it. I'm here for all of it. The, the big thing is that, Everyone has the ability to um, fast track their healing. They they just need to look the right way. You can you can choose to either like focus on all of the crap that you're going through and it's just spinning and spinning and spinning, you know, out of control over here, or you can shift your focus and look at and and believe me, I did not used to believe this when I was going through my own divorce. There are, there is a solution for every problem out there. Problems would not exist unless there are solutions. I agree with you. Always solutions. Yeah, but, and I always say the teacher's in front of you. It's when the student's willing to see. So True. those who are listening right now, you're hearing this message for a reason. So take advantage because this is very generous of you rachel thank you so much so yeah so we're just we're we're wrapping up right now and i've put the link in there rachel's going to be back in uh in our group and you know you do draw on her wisdom because um yeah we don't have to suffer alone that's no absolutely not i'm here i'm here for it yeah Yeah. right you gotta be we gotta be here for ourselves first and definitely rachel rachel's done the work and has the wisdom and experience to to share that so so generous of you i love you girlfriend thank you so much yeah we'll chat soon we have so much more in common that we even knew before so every time i do i see that (laughs) like oh (laughs) Love you. Bye. Bye.